This is a full-fledged desktop PC inside of a keyboard, albeit it's an ARM-based desktop PC, but nonetheless, I mean, we've got an operating system here that we can use just like we would with any other operating system out there. It's got built-in Wi-Fi, it's got Bluetooth, round pack, it's got Ethernet, USB, USB-C, and HDMI, and the price on this is only coming in at $90. And at that $90 price point, you do get the pre-installed operating system. This is the brand new Raspberry Pi 500. So we've got a nice upgrade from the older Pi 400, and we can even do some overclocking on the CPU and GPU. In this video, I wanted to see if it would be possible to use this as your everyday PC. And I gotta say, I mean, right off the bat, for most people out there, yeah, you could get by with something like this. Web browsing, video playback, document editing, photo editing, you wanna create some spreadsheets, we've got plenty of power here with the Pi 500. Heading over to the official Raspberry Pi website, all the information you need is over here. Gives us a breakdown on what we can do with this thing, but as you can see, we've got that 2.4 gigahertz quad-core ARM CPU. This can be overclocked, and I will be doing that in the video. 8 gigs of RAM, dual band 2.4 and 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 5.0, and this does come with a 32 gigabyte card. They're offering this as a base unit, and that one still comes with the card, or you can pick up a kit. Base unit is 90, and right here is what we get. So you get the Pi 500, 32 gig card, and of course you'll need that USB Type-C power supply. I'll tell you, the Raspberry Pi 5 and the Pi 500 are a bit finicky with their power supplies, so I'd recommend getting one of the official Raspberry Pi 5 volt, 5 amp power supplies. But if you just want to get everything in a kit, it is available. So you get that Pi 500, we still get that SD card, official Raspberry Pi 27 watt power supply, official mouse, micro HDMI, and the Raspberry Pi official beginner's guide. This one is coming in at 120. And to tell you the truth, if you're just starting out with the Pi or a Pi 500, I would splurge and just pick up the kit. It comes with everything you need to get up and running, except for a display. And you can use your TV, you can use a monitor. It's really up to you. So with the new Pi 500, I'm running Raspberry Pi OS. If you've used any other desktop operating system, it should be really easy to figure out. Usually we've got our start menu or app bar on the bottom. This can be changed if you want to, but out of the box, it's going to be right up here at the top. Got our drop down, and I've gone through and I've installed some applications. Now I find it really easy to just install an application known as Pi Apps, and I'll leave a link to uh, the website. It's a one-liner to get this up and running. From here, this is going to allow us to install different applications on the Raspberry Pi with just a couple of clicks instead of going into Terminal. There's a Creative App section, Game section, few emulators, standalone games here. But yeah, this just makes it really easy to get stuff you want installed on the Pi without having to hit Terminal every single time. And when it comes to performance with the new Pi 500, for most people it's going to be just fine. But I always like getting just a bit more out of this. So I do a little bit of overclocking and definitely do this at your own risk, but I want to show you what I've got here. We want to go to the boot firmware config.txt file. And we're going to scroll all the way down. I'll show you exactly what I've got going on. ARM underscore frequency 2900. This is going to bring the CPU clock from 2.4, which is the stock clock, up to 2.9. Some people have been able to go to 3 and 3.1 with this, but I've run into some crashing issues with my Pi 500. So I'm at 2.9, which is definitely a nice little boost over the stock 2.4. And for the GPU, I've gone up to 900 megahertz. So it's GPU underscore frequency 900. If you want to experiment with this, you definitely can, or just leave it at the stock clocks. There's lots of great information online about overclocking the Pi 5, and that's basically what we have here in a keyboard form factor. And of course, when you're overclocking anything, you want to make sure that it doesn't overheat. And with the original Raspberry Pi 5, we definitely recommend a heat sink. But if you take a look inside of the Pi 500, you can see that we've got this giant heat plate here. This is going to extract the heat from that CPU. And at these clocks, 2.9 on the CPU, 900 on the GPU, running a 10 minute CPU stress test and a 1080p video over here just to hopefully get the clocks up on that GPU. I only hit a maximum of 63 degrees Celsius with this after 10 minutes, so I'm not worried about thermal throttling with this unit, even with the overclock. 
Moving over to some real world scenarios using the Pi 500 as an everyday desktop. Now, I do think that there's a lot of people out there that would be able to get by with something like this as their desktop PC. Again, I've installed Pi apps and it just makes it really easy to install different applications like LibreOffice. So for instance, if you wanted to do some document editing, spreadsheets, and just some general writing, we've got everything here with the LibreOffice suite. It's completely free to use. There's no paywall restrictions. It's open source. And yeah, you can edit PDFs with this and even sign PDFs if you needed to. Now, one of the main things people do with their desktop PCs is browse the internet. We're just gonna head right over here to the Raspberry Pi website. The Pi 500 has Wi-Fi 5 built in plus ethernet. Right now, I'm using a wireless connection. Everything loads up really quickly. Over here, we've got a pretty image heavy website. And by the time I get to the bottom, the page is already populated. We'll go to their product section. It's just got a lot of stuff listed here. We can scroll on down. You can see it's already ready to go. I really haven't run into any issues with these newer firmware updates on the Pi 5 and web browsing. And that also includes 1080p playback from YouTube. So from here, we'll just search up a 4K demo video and I'll just go with a Sony Food demo. We're not gonna be running at 4K and we could do 4K 30 pretty decently, but I wanted to do 1080 60 with this. And we'll pause it, we'll go full screen, make sure we're at 1080, down at the bottom, defaulted to 720, we'll go ahead and play. And it's a really smooth experience, even at the stock clocks, if you didn't wanna do any overclocking for some reason, I mean, it's totally up to you, you're still gonna be able to do everything that we're taking a look at here in this video. Overclocking just allows for a little extra performance boost. And you know, since we have the ability to overclock, I just always do it with the Raspberry Pi. Another application I've installed here is known as GIMP. It's an open source image editor. Think Photoshop, but totally free. No paywalls, no restrictions. Now it is a bit limited on the AI side if that's what you're into, but there are AI plugins that you can install and they will work on the Raspberry Pi 5. I'm not exactly sure how fast they'll be, you know, given that we're working with a slower ARM chip, but you know, if you just wanted to do some family photo editing, you could definitely get it done here with GIMP. Uh, it's got all of the tools you need. And I just downloaded a sample image. I'm gonna do a bit of color adjustment here, then we can export it directly to the desktop. But yeah, GIMP is a full featured open source photo editor and it's even available for Windows if you wanna test it over there. There are a lot of different emulators that work pretty well here, like PSP using PPSSPP. We'll just get into one of these games. I'll do Sega Revo Rally. We're at 2x resolution, OpenGL backend, and by the way, I'm using an Xbox controller, just connected over USB to make it a bit easier. But a lot of the games that I've been testing here with this overclock on the Pi 5 have been running pretty well. Even the God of War series does run at 62x. And this game here, we could probably take it up to 3x, but it still looks pretty good on this 1080p display, just like it is. Now I will tell you, one thing I've been using quite a bit on the Pi 500 since I received it is Steam Link. Really easy to install, and basically what this is gonna allow us to do is remotely connect to a PC in the house, let's say our gaming desktop or even a laptop, and therefore we can stream those games directly to the Pi 500. So I've got my gaming laptop in a totally different room. I'm gonna be running this all on the Raspberry Pi 5. Now I'm connecting to my laptop using the Steam Link application. And as you can see, it definitely looks like the Steam Deck. This is Steam's big picture mode. It defaults to that. You can actually just have it go directly into Steam if you want to. But we're gonna get into Cyberpunk 2077 here. And with the decent router, even just using a Raspberry Pi 5, no overclock, you can get some great performance out of this. Now, it's really going to depend on how well your laptop or desktop runs said game, but the streaming aspect of everything is working on the Raspberry Pi 500. And even though we've only got Wi-Fi 5 with the Pi 500, I've been able to do 60, 120 streaming from my laptop or desktop. Now, again, this is not running natively on the Raspberry Pi. We just don't have enough power to play Cyberpunk 2077 like it is here. This is actually Ultra 1080p at 60 from my gaming laptop. 
So when it comes back to the question, can you use the Raspberry Pi 500 as your everyday PC? I think for a lot of people out there, you definitely could. If you want to get into something like this for web browsing, watching videos online, email checking, you can create some spreadsheets, a little bit of photo editing here and there, game streaming using something like we're seeing here, Steam Link or even Moonlight, some light emulation. This would be an awesome option, especially coming in at that $90 price tag. But again, I did mention if you're not into the pie, you don't have any extra accessories, I would pick up the kit for $120. That way you've got everything you need right off the bat. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. If you're interested in learning a little more or maybe picking one of these up, I'll leave some links in the description. And if you've got any questions or want to see anything else running on the Pi 500, just let me know in the comments below. But that's it for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.